Delaney from our Master's of Science in Marine Biology. Imagine if Charleston ran out of shrimp. If a quintessential food of low country culture suddenly just ceased to exist, there would be no shrimp boats along Shem Creek, no shrimp and grits on any menus, no more low country boils for you to attend. It's really hard to picture because life would be so different, but eventually you would adjust. You would buy different groceries, change your habits, order something different at the menu or at the <laughs> restaurant. Life would be different, but you would be okay. Now imagine you live on a remote Caribbean island. You and your family have one small fishing boat that you use to fish for every meal. But there are less and less fishes every day. You're realizing that they're becoming less abundant and they're becoming smaller. Now you're worried about your family, your health, your community, but you don't just have the option to buy different groceries or order a different meal at a restaurant because fishing for every meal is your livelihood. This scenario, these scenarios may seem far-fetched, but overfishing is happening globally. It's already actually happened, for example, to the Atlantic cod fishery near Cape Cod and to the sardines um, of Cannery Row in Monterey Bay. And running out of seafood is a very real threat for the 3 billion people on this earth that rely on seafood as their major source of protein in their diets. Enter the hogfish. This is a reef fish in the Caribbean that is a vulnerable to overfishing. The hogfish has been targeted by fishermen in this area for their delicious white and flaky fillets for centuries, but hogfish stocks have become smaller and less abundant in recent decades. And no regulations exist in this area in order to protect them. For example, there are no seasonal fishery closures or gear restrictions. So my thesis project is using biological clues in order to learn key information about this population of hogfish. I've sampled over 700 hogfish that were collected between the years of 2015 and 2020. I used three different things, as you can see on the slide. I used the otoliths, which are located behind the fish's brain in order to tell the age of the fish. I slice through the otoliths with a diamond edge saw, and I count the growth rings, just like you can count the rings of a tree. I use the eyeballs from the fishes in order to extract the eye lens to do bomb radiocarbon dating to confirm the age of the fish. I also used tissue samples from the, the gonads in order to determine the sex of the fish and whether or not they were mature. In synthesizing all this together, I can figure out sex ratios, growth curves, age at maturity, spawning season, and more. I plan to supply this data to fisheries managers and lawmakers in order to influence new policy to actually protect and sustain the important Caribbean hogfish fishery for the people and ecosystems who depend upon it. 